Hello, no filter nation, and welcome to episode five. I'm not going to speak in Spanish because I'm not bilingual. <laughs> Yeah, well, I think we just learned that. We yeah. tried an intro before this. You should have just kept it. Yeah, but I don't even know. That word might have offended somebody. I don't even know. It was wannabe Spanish. But. All right, welcome, guys. We're glad um, you're back with us. We are here. We are on episode five. I know. It's kind of fun to be here because I like how we gradually grow. Yeah. Not, not me in speaking. I'm still stumbling over my words. Yes, yeah, sure. What are we talking about today? Today, I wanted to really do this segment because this subject has been banging around in my head and I've been seeing it in front of us. And the title of it is Stop Competing for Happiness. Hashtag fake. Hashtag fake. So I think it's going to be a good one. I think there's a lot to jump on. I think Christina's gave us some good insight. I think it's something that I've been struggling with a lot lately. So <laughs> I think maybe that's the reason why this is perfect timing for this one. I agree. I think a lot of uh, people out there are going to be able to relate to this one and it'll start a great conversation that probably needs to be talked about. We are also going to do our... Battle if, one-liners. Yeah. If you laugh, you lose challenge. Me versus you. Which I can already hands down say I'm going to suck at this because I laugh at the stupidest stuff. This is going to be good. Um, today, we have no idea what the other person is going to say, so it should don't be offend right. anybody. I can't promise that. You can offend yourself, but not anybody else. And then we're going to jump into three tips to stay authentic in a fake world. So that very like very stern. No, yeah. don't do the voice. Change your voice. Change it. It's got to be a different voice. All right, guys. So, Christina, why don't you read us a couple reviews? Okay, today my first one. If I pronounced your name wrong, I'm so sorry. So it's, I think it's Calton One, um, but they said, love this podcast. I can relate so much to many of the topics. I laughed out loud more than once. Looking forward to the next podcast. P.S. I think you'd enjoy interviewing my husband, who's a full time stand up comic, stay at home dad, trophy husband. Uh, who doesn't love a trophy husband? Uh, yeah, I'm a trophy husband. You can't claim yourself oh, to be a trophy damn. husband. <laughs> Who does that? I'm first. Only Ryan. Only Ryan boys. Uh, thank you for that. And maybe we should call your husband. Not in a weird way. Uh, number two comes from Britt McGee 11. Favorite real couple, which that alone makes me smile. Thank you for that. Uh, Ryan and Christina nail it when it comes to real, raw, and uncut. They share such a unique outlook and are just a couple who you'd love to hang out with. Best adulting podcast ever. Keep it up. First uh, off, the fact you use adulting makes me love you. I get it. Another <laughs> noun gone verb. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, go check out episode four where you learn what dadding is. Yeah, and you you need it on a shirt. Dadding? Today I'm dadding. <laughs> but thank you for those. Keep coming up. Keep coming up. Keep them coming. We appreciate them. We love reading them. They make our day. So I, well, I not I, we appreciate it. All right, quick tip. We got one. Um, let me see what I found because uh, today we're talking about social media. So my quick tip um, was from an article I found about 60 tips for social media, and this one's for Instagram. It says, don't be afraid of detailed descriptions. I know a lot of us uh, nowadays, we just want quick and easy. We don't want to read much. We don't want to do much thinking, which is kind of sour like robots. Um, but it says, Instagram may all about be all about imagery, but an interesting description can really put a picture or video into context. And I love this one because you can have a beautiful photo, but if you just give three words, nobody can experience what that photo is really talking about. I'm not saying write an entire blog essay underneath the picture, but give it give it some meat and potato. Like make make us come into that photo with you, and then that way you become more relatable and authentic. That's good. Well, I didn't quite make up the whole thing by myself, so I can't really take credit. Well, somebody did good. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Christina. Yes, sir. Who was our sponsor? Today we are being sponsored by Highway 3. They are a sister duo who opened up a shop um, featuring all kinds of personalized goodies. I just recently did a blog about them because I love them so much. They, um, they make towels. They make um, these amazingly soft blankets. When I got Ireland and Connors, I rubbed it against Brian's face and he's like, not gonna lie, that's pretty soft. Um, but they make 
they make anything, but it's kind of modern and fun. You can pick your fonts, your styles, the colors of the things that you want so your kids can kind of get involved with it too. Um, right now I'm actually running a giveaway for $100 um, to Highway 3, so hop on the blog. It'll be linked in the um, in the podcast notes, right, Ryan? Yeah, we'll have it in the podcast notes and go to nofiltershow.com. You can go in episode five and all of our links will be in there and you can find that discount code. Uh, if you want to check them out on Instagram, they're um, Shop Highway 3 there. And on social media, I believe on Facebook there, you can just find them as Highway 3. But check out these sisters. They're amazing, super down to earth, and you'll really enjoy their shop. So thank you, Highway 3. All right. So social happiness. Oh, and okay. This is a big one. I know. It's almost like, where do you start? Some people might get mad at this for this one. But you know what I think? People would get mad only because it's a topic that you have to talk about. I'm just so tired of hearing and seeing the fakeness that is going on and people trying to be something that are not. When I was hearing messages in church this past Sunday, I heard Daniel Hines and he told us, you know, about that we should stop competing for happiness and he is the pastor of 757 Life Church. You can always check them out on Facebook or Instagram. But when I heard him say that, it struck something in me that made me think, you know, that is so true. We are always competing for happiness. And a lot of it is because we are trying to prove ourselves on social media. So I'm going to piggyback off that and say high five, Daniel, for making the statement that brought this podcast to fruition. And also... I think it's kind of amazing. Now, if you don't believe in God, we may not be the people for you, but I do believe that nothing is by coincidence. So Daniel makes the comment, Ryan comes home, wants to do the podcast. I just started reading this new book by Steve Furtick called Crash the Chatterbox, and it's talking all about how, you know, you have all these voices around you and you need to hone in to the one voice that really matters. But in there, the latest chapter I was reading was all about how we are auditioning for the world and for what reason, what we don't need to. It's, there's only one person that needs our attention and that person already said, high five, I want you on my team, you already won. So why do we keep auditioning for these people that truly don't matter? That's genius. Like, we've had many conversations that will tie into us talking about what is the purpose of a post? What are we trying to accomplish? Are we being authentic? Are we being real? Are we being... The best versions of ourselves. Yeah. Or are we just trying to please other people? And we have taken pride in knowing that a lot of what we do, we don't really... Sugarcoat it? Yeah, or, or put on a show. <laughs> we're not here to put on a show for other people and, and make them think that we're something we're not. Because you can go to Eden and watch all the reality shows on that. There's enough people doing that. So if you like that kind of stuff, jump in on it. Yeah, and I don't want to be part of it. Yeah, I agree. I don't want to be something I'm not. I pride myself in being real, authentic. I might not be for everybody, and we might not be for everybody. Yeah, that's true. But I'm not trying to be for everybody. And I think when people get that and they realize that they just need to be themselves and be honest and just show the personality that they have and not try to be somebody else's personality they will actually shine brighter than they would if they were trying to be something they're not. Well, what's that quote where it's like, be a first-rate version of yourself, not a second-rate version of somebody else? Yeah. Like, just stand alone. If, even if you're the only person in the room and you're speaking, and it only that, that message only leaks out and gets to one other person, then that's what matters because it was meant for that one person. It's not meant for hundreds and thousands. Like, sometimes your voice is only meant for a small a small little speck of society and you have to be okay with that and to be completely transparent and be 100 the reason this podcast started was because we were over what we were seeing on social media yeah <laughs> we were getting grouped into and i say we but yeah it's more, <laughs> christina, it's more christina than it was myself but i kept seeing these groups of people trying to influence her or the brand to be something that it wasn't and that, that she should do something a certain way 
or post something a certain way when everything inside of her is that's not her that's not what would make her Christina and anybody that follows her on social media will easily recognize that when she's being herself and her personality is coming through that's when it's the best content that's when you can relate and that's when you want more of it not this hey, robotic mean girl cult yeah. that just that people want to jump in and put everything down that somebody's doing you know if you don't like it stop following it if you don't if you're jealous of it and it's making you somebody you're not you should stop looking at it i agree well that's that's like you know when you go and you can like look at all the memes about people trolling your site like if if you don't like me and you still know what i'm doing bitch you're a hater like i don't mean to put it out there like that but it's true even even myself there's sometimes there's accounts that frustrate me and i'll still still scroll through and I'm like, why am I following them? It's okay to unfollow them. If they, if they bring nothing to my life, except for me constantly wearing this weight of, I'm not good enough, I'm not pretty enough, I'm not making enough, my house isn't big enough, then what the hell am I doing following these people? And we have to mentally start telling ourselves, it is okay to walk away. Would you agree? I 100% agree. And I, I read something on bigthink.com and it was an article that talked about um, greater happiness is limited because of social media and one of the things they took a survey and one of the things they found for example was that you tend to trust people and have lots of you tend to trust people more when you have lots of face-to-face -face interactions and you will probably assess your well-being more highly because of those face-to-face -face interactions but then you have the other side of it, and that's the interactions online on social networks that are not face-to-face. -face. And this truly may impact the way that you, the trust that you have in people online. And if you lose trust and, and this loss of trust, then it can affect, you know, your well-being rather than your online interaction itself. And, and basically what it's saying is, if I'm sitting here talking to a person face-to-face, I'm going to be able to read their actions. I'm going to be able to know what they mean, what they feel, what they say. You can hear their voice. Their body language. I mean, 70% of what somebody's saying is their body language. I agree. And 30% and of it is is the words that are actually coming out of their mouth. And, and if you reverse that and you put that into a online social media, you're seeing something and you can't judge whether it's real or not. And we tend to take things as face value and trust that that's the way that it truly is when it's not. Yes. And a lot of it can be smoke and mirrors. And then what happens is that you compare yourself to what you're seeing. And your self-worth and self-image is now being judged upon what somebody else is lying about. Um, so again, piggybacking off of that, um, in the book, Crash the Chatterbox, there's, a, there's an uh, excerpt that I'm going to read that says, we have an instant access to the lives of those we know, those we don't, those we can't stand, and those we wish we were, those we'd give anything to measure up to. Well, we don't exactly have access to their lives. We have access to the parts of their lives they'd like us to see. Yeah. I mean, you couldn't get more boom in the face than that. You are not seeing the whole picture. I, it can't, I don't know what else to I say. I want to go back to it. Daniel said in his sermon on Sunday, because it, that just made me think of something where, you know, we have our lives and let's just say that our life is a swimming pool and we are in a swimming pool in our backyard. And let's just say that that I swimming pool analogy. is filled with alligators. It's filled with sharks. It's dark. It's murky. It's disgusting. But there is this one corner of that pool that is crystal blue and perfect. And we tend to take our camera of our lives and make sure that we perfectly, you know, arrange that, that photograph. That so square. It's only that square of that blue water. So everybody in the world thinks that that's our life is that perfect little blue square. When in all actuality, that entire pool is filled with danger it's filled with dark, murky things, and we are bouncing off that, but we're trying to pretend like that's not what we're swimming in. We're trying to pretend like we're swimming in something perfect when you really need to just show that, hey, 
shit life happens. Yeah, just Life's say, tough. Like, you know what? Let's do life together. Let's figure out how to do life together. And let's figure out how to overcome this, this troubles and this nonsense. I think, too, that's what's happening. It's a lack of, of human interaction and, and common courtesy. I know for me personally, and I can't speak for all bloggers, but I can tell you most of them, we live in a silent depression because God forbid we show you that, you know, here's, I'm just gonna put it out there. God forbid we show you we don't have a ton of money because if we show you all these things that we have, you automatically assume that we're loaded because we have all this stuff. God forbid we tell you that we're having money problems. If we do chats about marriage, God forbid we tell you we had a bad day because, well, we should be living a perfectly happy marriage because we talk about it. You know, God forbid we show you that we're having a moment of weakness and we need to call out somebody because, well, you don't have your shit together and you put it out there like you do. It is such a hard world to live in when you don't know who to trust and you don't know who to call because you don't really know who anybody is. And you may feel like you have these connections and sometimes they are the most, they really are so genuine and so fulfilling. But I would say 90% of the time, it, it's like you said, it's words. People can use words, but there might not actually be feeling behind that. And, you know, what you just said is really, really good because you ever been to that party in high school and you've seen that cool girl, cool guy group and yes. you're like, man, I wish I was a part of that. I wish I was a part of that, but I'm just not good enough to be in there. And, and you feel less than what it is. And when those cool guy, cool girl groups go home, they're shells of themselves and empty inside and are really, truly struggling. I know that when I find other, other couples and other you know, friends, I don't like to be around the ones that seem like they're perfect because if they're perfect, I can't relate to them. I don't know how to battle my my inner demons or marriage demons or financial Well, you don't feel demons. like you can talk openly about them. Yeah, and, and I want to be around the people I can brainstorm with, uh, people that we can figure it out together, people that are like, you know what, my life isn't perfect. You know, I trust in the person above. That would be God. I'm going to give it to him, and I'm going to hopefully get through this with you guys, with your support, and we're going to hold hands all the way through this, and guess what? We're going to be laughing at the end of it instead of cowering in a corner in some dark closet, not knowing what to do, feeling like there's nobody available to help. Well, I think, too, just like you said, you know, say you're having a, say you're having a rough patch in life. I don't want to go to the person that looks like they've got it all figured out because you can't help me because you've never struggled. If you have somebody that's willing to say, hey, listen, I totally get it. Like, I just went through that. This is how we got through it. Let me let me give you a couple of things that work for us. And you're like, yeah, definitely. I'd love to have a chat with you. Yeah, you want to be 100? Here's, here's the people you're listening to. Suffered from depression, one yeah. of us. Suffered from alcoholism and substance abuse, one of us. Had financial issues to the point of almost being homeless throughout our marriage. And also to the point of not even being able to put food in a pantry both of us and guess what we love God we love each other we hold our each other's hands we lift each other up when the other person's down we hold our children's hands up when they're down and we show them this is how we get through it we stay strong and we just battle through it and we just we we release and give it to God well so we don't bullshit about it either like hey listen this is what it is like hey I can't go till lunch today I don't got the money it doesn't make me less of a person it's where I'm at in life right now and and if your friends are true friends, they'll be like, we got it. Either, hey, let, let's go make sandwiches at your house, or hey, you know what, I got you today. Like, your true friends, you're right or die. <laughs> they don't give a shit, because they're gonna be there for you. So, this whole segment is about weeding out all of that fluff, and just finding that solid foundation to like, just sink your feet into it and and do life with those people. No, that's perfect. And actually, let, let's take it back just a little bit. Let's 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 jump into generational. Our parents never dealt with this. I think our. I agree with you. I think our parents dealt with their own things, but it was. It's one thing to be like, well, you know, the way my mom raised me was, you know, she said not to do this, but. She's only basing it off what her mom did. She's not basing it off what 15 of the local social group moms are judging her through her Facebook posts. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, that's a way different world to live in. And so, 
like he was saying, it's generational. Think about when these teens grow up. They're getting bullied on social media. Like, what the hell is that? Yeah. <laughs> like, like, let these kids behind, live their life. <laughs> somebody behind a keyboard is dictating the thoughts and feelings of another person. That is insane to me. But it, it's not just at a teen level. It's at an adult level now. And that's what I think is crazy. It used to be, oh, just get through your teenage years. It'll be fine. And it really was. Because once you got out of high school, it, it was kind of like, yeah, you have drama. But, like, you just did life. Now, Jesus Christ, and until the day you die, you're probably going to get judged. <laughs> I hope everybody out there has somebody that they can relate to when they're in the gutter and that they can just talk to. And if... You just moved somewhere, you're in the military, or you just relocated, you have no friends or family, message us. We'll talk to you about it. Because Absolutely. the worst thing you could do is bottle that up and keep that in because that's when extreme things start happening. So if you're out there and you don't have anybody to talk to, message us. We will respond quickly and we love having conversations that do nothing but help. So if you have somebody, call them because I know based upon the feeds and the interaction on social media that I'm seeing, that there's a lot of you that are struggling with a lot of things. And guess what? You're not the only ones. We struggle with stuff daily. You know, there's people out there that's, if you're not struggling with something daily, even if you're it's, fake, yeah, even <laughs> if it's something just tiny, it could be a flat tire that you could be struggling with in that particular day. But if you're not struggling with something that could be improved, then it is fake. Like everybody's got something. Make it a bright day, make it positive, put it to the right place and the right perspective. And if you can't get there, find somebody that will get you there. So generationally, we both agree that nowadays it's so hard. It's so hard to be a parent. It's so hard to be married. It's hard to be in high school. It's hard. Good God, it's hard to be at your job. Everything is judged. Everybody has a damn opinion and it may not even be asked for. They just give it to you anyways, because we have made a world where that's acceptable. Um, I also think it's crazy too that we also live in a world where we bitch and moan about it, but nobody does anything about it. Like, God forbid we actually shut down our social media platforms. Like, me and Ryan were just having this conversation the other day. I was like, I, I want to shut it down. And he was like, well, why would you do that? And I'm like, okay, well, I get it. We are now a social voice, but think about it. Think about how much less stress we would have if we weren't asking for clicks, begging for likes, who has the most followers, this is my day, gotta put on makeup because I might see Sally on my social media feed, like who the hell cares? Let me ask you a question, what would you do with that time if you weren't doing that? Give it to my kids. Boom. Or? My husband. Boom. <laughs> or I would make more successful business ventures. I know that sounds stupid, but God, for, if I actually took the time to invest in building my brand, I, I could take over the world, Ryan Boyce. I, would, <laughs> I have to laugh at that. I would tell you guys, <laughs> download an app that tracks your social media usage. You will shock yourself on how many hours you spend on each thing. And if you just took one of the hours out of it and put it towards something positive in your life, you will absolutely change it around. That's like the other day, I purposely shut off my Instagram and I took my kids to Chuck E. Cheese. It was so boring for me because there was nobody in there to talk to. My kids didn't care that I was there. But I'll tell you what, my heart, God, I can't even tell you how happy I was. No, that's awesome. And, all right, so let's wrap this first segment up. Let's I, do I, it. I want to give you one question. Oh, all right, God. Let's end this one question on this segment. If you could give advice to your children about how to be authentic and not fake, what would it be? Please, God, don't get on social media. <laughs> that I mean, would be that's my... not a realistic option for, for kids nowadays. What something that is real solid advice that you would give? On um, how to be authentic, it would probably be if what you're doing or what you're posting allow somebody else to feel like they're normal then post it but if you're creating the content to make somebody compare themselves to you then there's nothing good coming out of that that's awesome well thanks Ryan no that that really is an awesome statement I was I was kind of freestyled and I was wondering what you're gonna come up with but that was pretty damn good it made you like me more didn't it all right guess what <laughs> well I got cut off just give me a compliment Whoa, ah, 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 Go. Ah. Ah.
Your transitions are just weird. You know what time it is? <laughs> time for you to mock me? You laugh, you lose challenge. Okay, here we go. I don't know if you guys are familiar with it, but it is time. A lot of times it's Christina taking on the challenge. A lot of times it's me taking on a challenge. We are going to go head to head, mano y mano, and we're going to see who wins. This is the Laugh Out Loud Challenge. Basically, we're going to read statements, jokes, whatever it is. The other person has to try their best not to laugh. If they laugh, that's a point. Okay. First person to get to five points wins. Okay. Well, it shouldn't be five points. Like, what if you never laugh and we're here all day? Well, then we'll just declare victory. Oh, wow. He's right. extremely competitive, if you cannot tell. Yeah. All right. Do you want to flip a coin or should ladies first? Ladies first, okay? Um, okay. <clears throat> what did the blonde say when she saw the Cheerios box? Oh my god, donut seeds. Solid, solid. That was right. good. All right. Women to her husband while at it. And you know what I mean by at it. Please say dirty things to me. The man, bath, kitchen, living room. Okay, I'm not going to laugh at that because sadly that's my life. Okay. Okay. Why can't a blonde dial 911? Hmm. She can't find the 11. Hmm. That was funny. Don't, don't try to sell it. Don't try to sell it. Okay. <laughs> My, my son wanted to know what it's like to be married. I told him to leave me alone, and when he did, I asked him why he was ignoring me. Now it's good. Hmm. That almost got me a point. Oh, you're laughing? I think that's a point. No, I was sniffling. No, that's a point. One point, Ryan. With your ghetto point system. So I used to have a job at a calendar factory. But I got the sack because I took it a couple of days off. <laughs> she laughed at herself. One point, Ryan. Two nothing. All right, well, it's not fair. I can't look at you because when you smirk, then I laugh. That's right, not fair. All right, all right, all right. I'll stop trying to do that. Yeah, stop it. All right. I went through an expensive and painful procedure yesterday, having had my spine and both my testicles removed. Still, some of the wedding presents were fantastic. That's not funny. And nobody should laugh at that. Put your hands down. Hey, how did the blonde dive while breaking leaves? Hmm. She fell out of the tree. That doesn't count. That counts. Yes! One for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Thanks. All right. My wife's cooking so bad, we usually pray after our food. Wow. That's hurtful. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, I thought I was gonna get one on that. Yeah, but you didn't. Um, trying to find one. Okay, here we go. Where was it? Oh, how do you drown a blonde? Bleh! Start over. How do you drown a blonde in a submarine? How? You knock on the door. Not funny. No. no? Yeah. No, that Darn. My wife told me she needs more space. I said no problem and locked her out of the house. Mm -mm -mm. No. Nope. Come on. Nope. Oh, man. Whenever the cashier at the grocery store asks my dad if he would like the milk in a bag, you know what he replies? Hmm. No, just leave it in the carton. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Ah. <laughs> uh, what to give a man who's got everything? A woman. She'll tell him how everything works. Mm-mm. Nope. Hey, what time did the man go to the dentist? Huh? 2.30. Oh, wow. Wow. It was good, Ryan. I tried to remarry my ex-wife. That's not funny. But she figured out I was only after my money. Mm-mm. No. No. God. Nope. What's mine? Hey, how do you make holy water? How? You boil the hell out of it. Wow, that was good. Thanks, thank you. That was, um, that was really good. I almost laughed at that one. All right. All 
A woman's at home and she hears someone knocking at her door. She goes to the door and opens it and sees a man standing there. He asks the lady, do you have a vagina? Wow. She slams the door in disgust. The next morning she hears a knock at the door. It's the same man. He asks the same question to the woman. Do you have a vagina? She slams the door again. And this joke isn't funny. <laughs> I gotta laugh. It worked. My strategy worked. Wait, that was the joke? Yeah, and I made you laugh because of how bad the joke was. That's Ooh. not even fair. Hey. That's not even fair. Hey, tactics. I didn't say we were playing clean. This is a dirty game. I'm going to win. Oh, my. Ugh. Three to two for anybody who's keeping score. Okay, what do you call a blonde with two brain cells? What? Pregnant. <laughs> I don't know why that was funny. You should get one too. Hey. You I, can't I hide have, the. I held it in. La no! It's got to be laughing out Folks, loud. Folks, comment if you think that's hey. BS. Christina has now laughed at her own joke. I right, game point. Yeah, I'm, I'm about to win. My wife just found out I replaced our bed with a trampoline. She hit the roof. No, that was not funny. Okay. I'm. Hey, what did the blondes. <laughs> you even. That should be game. That. I'll even let her finish, but she can't even laugh at the, at the joke. So. Hey, what did the blonde say when she found out she was pregnant? What? Oh my god, I wonder if it's mine. Wow. <laughs> wow. Alright, that's ball game, by the way. But I'm just gonna read this laugh one just to add the icing on the cake. The laugh one or the last one? <laughs> the last one. Alcohol is a perfect solvent. It dissolves marriages, families, and careers. Wow, that's actually not a joke. That was my <laughs> life. <laughs> I won. My wife and I were happy for 20 years. Oh, you're, you're going to still go. Then we met. Wow. That one was well, kind of funny, actually. Boom. The winner is... Me. Absolutely Ryan. not. Yes. Those are my points. No. Yeah, you laughed. If you laugh, the other person gets a point, hon. Oh my, first off, if you watch our YouTube videos, Ryan is, look at this, Ryan is cheating. He has been marking his laughs. Guys. Hey, hey, go back. I can't right now. Listen, my comment, cheater. tell me who won. If you're on YouTube, comment below. Tell us who you think won that segment. If I you did. are listening on the podcast, send us a message on Facebook. Post it, whatever you gotta do. Tell us who you think won. Hashtag Ryan won. Hashtag blondes for the win. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. That was okay. fun. I actually like that one. We'll have to do a battle again on that one. Yeah, but you need to like we need to both like investigate our jokes and make them like solid. Yeah, we'll bring it. We'll bring it. Yeah. Alright, so let's okay, round this down on on the last segment. And so I know that we discussed going and talking about how to be happy and how to stop competing for happiness, hashtag fake. So let's give our listeners and our viewers some real tips they can use to stop doing it. We, we told them why. Now let's give them some, some ways of how they can stop doing it. Why don't you give us the first one? Okay, so we came up with three tips. So obviously this is how we feel that we can stay authentic, but also how when we're going through social media, how we feel we can sense authenticity through people that we're following. Um, the first one is do you stand behind your posts? Um, whether you're a blogger or you're just somebody that's posting pictures for fun um, and interacting on social media, when you post a photo or the words that you write do you truly stand behind them or are you writing simply to get the click buttons? You know, I think this is a great, a great first one because there's a difference between the way I see social media and the way other people can sometimes view it. I use it as a space that I enjoy. I can come back to daily. I can see things from my perspective. Some people might not say, oh, well, that's not the right filter, or 
you don't have a cohesive look on your page, I don't really flip and care, to be quite honest with you. This is me. This is who I am. This is what my life is about. It is, in, it is family. It is real estate. It is podcasting. This is me. And you're either going to like me and want to hang out in my social platform, or you're not. And if there is a filter that is not appeasing you, and that's the reason you're not following me, well then, peace out. I think, too, it's, you know, it's one of those things, too, you know, and putting it all on the line because we're being honest here. I sometimes, I know this sounds ridiculous, and people can judge me if they want if I'm, you know, being a bad mom, but this is how I realize that I've gotten too far into social media is when posting pictures of my youngest two kids, I get the most engagement. My older two boys, because people don't feel connected to them, I don't get a lot of engagement. And also because they don't like pictures. But if you notice, I don't post a lot of pictures of my older boys. How pathetic is that? That mothers are now deciding what to post to see if they get engagement. Like, wow. I was I was upset with myself when I sat down and started, like, really critiquing what I was doing. And I was like, who the hell are you? Like, those are your children. And I don't give a shit if anybody doesn't feel connected to them. Those are your kids. And you post them if you want to. Yeah, darn right. I mean, if you went through, if we were going back to the talking about generations, it was photo albums. It was big, thick. I miss those. Suede, all different fabric. And like the photo tape album. turned yellow. Yeah, the tape <laughs> turned yellow. Pictures would come loose behind that cellophane thing and they'd fall out and you'd replace them and you'd see where they perfectly fit because of how much it was faded. And you'd look and you'd But you know back. what's fun is your kids would get those. They do get those. But what's sad is now it's online and the photos are being dictated based upon likes. So imagine having half of a old school photo album without half of your family in it. Yeah, it's sad. That's crazy. It's crazy that that's even an, an option. And going back and, and rounding out this first one, we're talking about um, standing behind your post. If you look at my Instagram feed, the pictures are what they are, what I want them to be. But I will guarantee you, if you go into that, you know, where you type in your comments and your posts, and, and there is some truly inspirational, heartfelt stuff that I'm posting in there. Because to me, that's me. Those are my words. It can't be misconstrued by looking at my picture of what it is and what it isn't. This is how I feel. And most of the time, it's positive reinforcing, and that's what you're going to get. And whether you look at that picture and are like, well, that's an ugly picture, I don't, I don't care. Exactly. Go read the words that came out of my mouth, because that's what should mean more than what you're staring at on a photograph. Preach it! Yeah. <laughs> Drop the mic. Boom. All right. Let's do number two. Go ahead. Give us number two. Okay, number two is no more than three edits. So took me a minute to understand this. Okay, one. so but when because, she broke it down to me, it this is this is a good one. Go ahead. Okay, so I'm going back to the book that I'm reading, Crash the Shatterbox, and it's on page twenty six, but he's talking about Stephen Furtick is a pastor and he's talking about how he was having a moment and he was doing a study for one of his sermons and he's like, I really want to just post a picture of me doing my sermon. So he goes to snap the picture <laughs> And he steps back and he goes, oh, I didn't really like the books in the background. It looked like super cluttered. So he says he starts rearranging the books on his desk to make a better photo. Well, then he goes a step further and says, well, I didn't like the books that were on the table. So now he gets up, starts taking books off his bookshelf that are like really educational and makes them look really, really smart. Right. And he goes, by the time I sat down, nothing in the photo was what I was actually doing. And it brings me to my point. If you have to step back. And take something that, like, let's bring it to real life, right? Well, that's real life for him, but real life for me. Made baked ziti the other day. Ryan said it was wonderful, so don't knock it. Um, but I was like, oh, this looks really pretty in the dish. So I put the baked ziti on the table, and I go to take a picture of it. And I was like, this doesn't look pretty enough. So I go over to a kitchen table, put the baked ziti in the middle of the table, start rearranging everything, start adding things to the table, turn it so it has the right light. And by the end of it, I, I honest to God, I told myself, you are pathetic. Like nothing about this is real life. So I erase the photo from my phone. If you have to rearrange your phone, filter it more than one to two times and like stage it, don't post that shit. Nothing about it is real. That's so good. And 
I started thinking, I'm like, well, I, I'm horrible at spelling. I have a lot of edits that go into it. It's just me. <laughs> but that's okay, man. <laughs> and then when she broke it down to me and said, listen, if you are changing what you're trying to post because you think it's going to appease somebody more, that's not real. And I was like, damn, that is, that's dropping some knowledge on somebody because it, it's so true. Who are you changing it for? Because originally it was perfect to you. I love that. And that's like God. Why are you trying to change yourself? Because you are already perfect in his eyes. So why are you trying to change what perfection already was? Yeah, and you're just trying to get those likes and comments from people that, honest to God, like, and this is not offensive to the people that follow us or that we follow and we interact with, but you're a, in a non Again, this is what Ryan was talking about in the beginning. Like, it may upset people hearing this and it may offend people, but that's not the point. The point is to have a conversation. Your opinion of me doesn't matter. And my opinion of you doesn't matter. You need to worry about you and I need to worry about me. And we need to stop giving a shit of how pretty these pictures are. I love it. I love it. And then let's go into the one that I think I like the most, which is uh, the third and the final one, which is, will your post make someone happy? And I also said, or will it make them judge themselves or think less of their own life? Okay, explain that to us. So my thing is, it goes back to editing your picture, right? If I would have just posted the picture of the baked ziti, some mom that's rushing around the house trying to make a nice meal for her family would be like, oh my God, like she made baked ziti too. But now if I've changed the lighting, rearranged everything on my kitchen table to make it look like I have friggin' Joanne Gaines home, and I've made this elaborate dish that looks like it came straight from Pinterest. Not many moms can relate to that. So who am I really making happy? Nobody. It, unless, you're, unless you're just looking for pretty pictures, I'm not making you happy. And then on top of that, I'm not making you judge your life. I didn't make a dish that looks that good. My dining room table doesn't look that pretty. I wish I was a stay-at-home mom that could take care of four kids and bake food. When in reality, I'm walking around with a glass of wine trying not to yell at my kids, hoping I don't bake the ziti and have it on the table in time for my husband to come home. We were at a water park uh, probably three weeks ago, and I was talking to my friend Todd, and he said something to me that actually was pretty awesome. We were talking about being sober. And he has a lot more years than I do. I think he's on... 60? Yeah, somewhere up there. And I was telling him that I was celebrating my six years sober. And he, he wasn't aware that it had been that long. And he was, you know, just absolutely giving me, you know, praise that he was super excited for me. And I said, yeah, I follow you. You are kind of an inspiration on that. I see every year on your sober anniversary or sober birthday is what we call it that you go and get a tattoo and you add another scratch to what the a tick are. mark yeah a tick mark on, on your on your leg and i said I, I love it i think it's awesome and he said to me he goes ryan you know one of the main reasons i do it and i put it on social media is because i just want one person to see it so that way i can be able to help them and possibly they reach out because they themselves want to be sober and it, that was one of the most humbling things that somebody said to me and i was like you know that's genius you know if you could make your social media inspiring revolve around helping somebody else and inspiring them on many different platforms or even just one, if that's the niche, if that's the real authentic you and if you touch one person, it's all worth it. And nothing about anything else can override that oversee it nobody can hate on it if somebody hates on it then so what that's, then that's their, their problem that's their problem if your post or your picture or your personality or your voice or your touch hub whatever it is can touch one person and change one person's life for the positive then everything is worth it that <laughs> i have nothing to say to that yeah. Well, what you said, I mean, it, that, it just kind of stuck in my mind because that's a story that has stuck with me because it's so true. On May 11th, 2011 was my sober birthday. And every year, you can go back on my timeline and look at every May 11th, there is a very, very heartfelt post or blog or whatever that goes out to that date and guaranteed every single year. It is amazing. The the feedback and the message that Ryan gets just from people coming out of the woodworks that you would never imagine are struggling with the same thing. And it's beautiful because they feel like they have this person 
that can speak to their soul. Like, oh my God, you get it. Like, you're not going to judge me. You're not going to condemn me. You're going to walk me through this. Yeah, and, and a lot of people didn't know my story of having to struggle with addiction. And when they hear it, they're like, holy crap, you struggled with alcohol? You struggled with drugs? Yeah, I did. I'm not perfect. And so they're like, man, my husband is absolutely struggling with it. What can I do? I am absolutely struggling, Ryan, with it. What can I do? And it goes to the same thing with Christina when it comes to depression. So if your post, if your social media presence can inspire one person, it's all worth it. So I think to wrap this up, not to, you know, because it's been a kind of super deep talk, but I think sometimes you have to have those deep conversations that people aren't talking about. So in the end, if you're not willing to turn off your social media, because we live in a world where it's all around us and it's just going to turn into this huge monster of a thing anyways, at least learn to be authentic. And the three steps we have, do you stand behind what you're posting? No more than three edits is number two. And will your post make somebody happy and inspire them rather than make them judge themselves or think less of who they are. And if you can go through that checklist mentally in your head when you are getting ready to post, when you're scheduling your post, when you are thinking about posting, you will always make the world better and you should care less about any drama that it causes. So with that... Episode 5 is a wrap! <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave your comments. We'd love to hear your messages on this one. And like we said, if you're struggling with anything, we're two really real people that go through the same stuff. So feel free to message us, leave your reviews, your comments. And as always, we hope you have a great week and we will see you for episode six. Peace. Peace out. Hey, you too. Hey, hey, you, hey, you, you. the two youths, you. the two youths, hey. That's I, New York, though. That's not Boston. I can't believe you're... No, that's a My Cousin Vinny reference on the movie quote. So on the go movie watch quote. The movies, hey, the two youths, the two youths You here. see how Ryan can't okay. keep his hand down? Yeah, Bradley. because that's what we do when we need uh, New York. We need a pizza. We need something. As uh, he's wearing this hat. I didn't say the Yankees. Ryan will die if you talk about the Yankees. Hey, guys. We love Thanks you. Thanks for joining us. Peace. Send a comment below. Check out the website. See you guys soon.